Hello and welcome to Ageless Rock, a channel where megalithic fans get to see megalithic sites with megalithic lens. Today, we are going to check out a unique temple where megalithic fans wouldn't mind going even though it is very isolated from the Angkorian city. Construction credit goes to King Suryavarman I, which means it is an 11th century temple. But the controversial dating goes back to 10th century. King Suryavarman I was a Buddhist king, but this temple is a Hindu temple. As usual, when it was first rediscovered, it was covered in vegetation. Nom Chizor is in the southern province of Cambodia called Takeo Province. It is in the northern district of Takeo Province called Samrung District. That should clear up the confusion of north or south as you read articles without seeing the map. It is very far from the Grand Circuit of Angkor where every tourist wants to be there. But Nom Chizor is for those with extra time and money or happens to be in Takeo province. The drive from Angkor is about 7 hours. The original name of this site is Sri Surya Parvata where Surya means sun and Parvata means mountain. Surya is the sun god in Hinduism. You can imagine in ancient times, Cambodians revert to this site as Mountain of the Sun God. Phnom Chizor Temple is located on top of Phnom Chizor Hill. The peak of this hill is 133 meters above sea level. However, the center of the temple is located at an altitude of 119 meters according to Google Earth. Reaching Phnom Chizor Temple requires a good pair of legs. It is a good walk up 412 steps. Take a good break and enjoy the view before going to the summit which offers a few more things to see. Phnom Chizor Temple is mostly mentioned as a panoramic temple related to the sun god Surya. Coincidentally, King Surya Raman is also implied as sun god king. But this temple is dedicated to Shiva. Interesting to note also is the pyramid looking platform on the east side of the temple. This temple is an amazing stacking of laterite stones for stairs and foundation on the side of the hill that made it look like a pyramid. Then thousands of polygonal sandstones were stacked to form a typical Angkorian temple. This east-facing temple seems to be approximately 50 meters long by 45 meters wide, measuring from wall to wall on the outside. The laterite stone steps is a gentle slope until you reach the pyramidal base of the temple. With such a small area, it is unusually jam-packed with structures related to a temple sanctuary such as north and south libraries, mandala, two Agni Grihas or fire shrines and Gopuras. The structure in red has no known reason to be there in terms of Angkorian architecture. To add to the anomaly, it is noted to have grey sandstone while everywhere else is described as pale brown siliceous sandstone. As you approach the temple, you will see the standard greeting of a Gopura. There are plenty of windows with circular spindles on laterite platform. The walls are a unique blend of laterite and sandstone. The door frame and lintel shows that this is a Hindu temple. Kala will be the first to welcome you with the death of your old self and the new beginning of time. On the sandstone pediment, Shiva plays a monocot zither while Vishnu and Brahma sit on his left side. Vishnu is playing the drum while Brahma is playing a pair of small cymbals. On the other side of the Gopura, there is a pediment of Parvati sitting on Shiva's lap riding on a bull nandi, or commonly known here as Uma and Maheshvara. 
but it is the highly ornated lintel that is impressive to me. The display of craftsmanship is unbelievable. Look at the details of Kala. This is a millimeter precision. The tiny lines of the upper jaw, eyes, and head is an incredible detail which I wonder if it is even necessary. It is barely noticeable if you walk into the temple and turn back to see what is on top of the lintel. Immediately upon entering through the entrance, you get to see the north and south libraries. It is a brick structure that sits on a sandstone platform with mini windows on the top. This temple is so small and cramped that upon stepping out of the east entrance Gopura, you are already ready to step into the main sanctuary. This main hall has gone through a lot of changes. It is clearly a display of how modern Cambodians worship. This original Hindu temple is now very much a Buddhist temple. You can say evolution of religion took place here. This temple now has Buddha and four arms Vishnu on a pedestal. Hindus and Buddhists can worship in the same temple now. But even more interesting is that Buddha, Shiva, Vishnu or Brahma all can have coke and mineral water. The sanctum is flanked by two slightly smaller temples on the north and south. These two brick towers with sandstone door frames will need a good restoration to see the glory of ancient Khmer architecture. The tower on the southwest corner is clearly made of bricks with sandstone door frame and has a beautiful pediment. However, the one on the northwest corner is completely gone. The only clue it was once a tower is the sandstone door frame. Since rediscovery by the French, we have come up with lots of theories and geometrical diagrams trying to understand why and how this temple got here. So far, we can only say Cambodians lived here 1000 years ago are highly advanced and extremely hardworking. But the problem with that narrative is, this temple was not an easy task 1000 years ago. Those on the roof in the photo on the right are 1000 years more advanced than those King Suryavarma the first dealt with. They said to the French expert they had no idea how it was done. When the French arrived, the locals lived with the temples ignoring the destruction caused by Mother Nature. It was the backward French who instructed the highly advanced Cambodians what to do next. As far as I'm concerned, the locals are fine with vegetation growing all over. They knew it was here all along. It was the French who said, this is not okay and we have to do something about it. Phnom Chizor is famous for being a temple with a breathtaking view. But the east-facing temple is more than just a picturesque view. You can see the stairs on the east leading to somewhere further to the east. Descending from the 412 steps hilltop temple, you will reach a cruciform structure known as Saint Temal Temple, which is also known as a Gopura. It is 295 meters away, measuring from the sanctum of the temple to the center of the cruciform. Saint Mall Temple, which is also called Gopura, is 831 meters away from the second cruciform, measuring from center to center. This second cruciform Gopura structure is also called Saint Roving Temple. At San Roving, there is a structure that seems like the remnants of a moat which no one is talking about. It is hardly mentioned as a moat, but it is clearly a structure that could only be a moat if it was created by someone. 
If this straight line is a mode, it would be a 2.2 kilometers long and San Roving Temple is right in the middle. If you connect the two far end of the mode and the line will cross the Gopura right in the middle. So now you have two astronomical lines crossed at San Roving Temple. I think this coincidence is worthy of further investigation. Stepping out of San Roving Temple on the east, you will be 235 meters away from the west of Om Bare. From the satellite view, I can see that the Bare is approximately 360 meters long by 170 meters wide. From the sanctum of Phnom Chizor Temple to San Tamal Temple to San Roving Temple to center of Om Bare is a straight line. Clearly, this is an intelligent design. If this is an intelligent design, then we should know by now what is the purpose. How did we end up passing down the entire Mahabharata but didn't pass down this significance to religion? The hilltop temple is an amazing achievement of ancient Khmer architecture. It is extremely hard to do simply by the fact that megalithic stones had to be dragged up the hill after clearing and shaping the pyramidal slope. Time will change many things. Two yonis for two lingas were created in the past but is now on the side of the temple because it is no longer needed. But these yonis are more than just unwanted pieces of stones. If you are wearing megalithic lens, you can see that there are long and straight vertical striations inside. A powerful tool went through the stone in vertical motion is a reminder that someone else was here first. So let's recap. A megalithic temple was built on top of a hill. A sacred pool was dug out while two cruciform gopuras sat perfectly in line between two sacred monuments. All this was done one millennium ago, but today we struggle to answer what happened here. Well, that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this short presentation on Phnom Chizor Temple and a Sacred Beret. See you in the next video and have a wonderful day. This is Bernie Ong signing out. Lehaim.